What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today we're gonna be checking out three audiophile gaming headsets. So not headsets from gaming companies like Corsair, Razer, HyperX, and so on, but actual audiophile companies whose roots, heart and soul, revolves around audio, which in the end is gonna be giving you outstanding quality because they have the technology and the resources, and they've been doing it for a combined 226 years. I'm talking about Audio-Technica, Sennheiser, and Bayer Dynamic. First, we'll be checking out the Audio-Technica ATH G1WL wireless. We then have the brand new Sennheiser GSP370 wireless. And Sennheiser is really no stranger to the gaming headset market. And then the Bayer Dynamic MMX 300 Gen 2 headset. These are the oldest pair out of the three, and they're also wired, but definitely deserve still being included here in the audiophile genre for sure. And honestly, in terms of visuals, they all look like the company's, you know, regular headphones if you ignore the microphones, with the Sennheiser one looking most like a gaming headset. Now these three are all very different in their own way, and I picked them up because I feel they're the three best audiophile options on the market. Now before we begin, I'll do a run through of all three, then at the end I'll save the mic test so you guys can hear them all back to back to back. And I'll try to keep this, you know, as consumer friendly as possible, not using crazy audiophile terms you guys might not understand. And I'm not going to run through all the specs and stuff like that, you can just check up on, you know, the listing somewhere. So just giving you an overall roundup of the three. So we'll start off with the Sennheisers because odds are you're most familiar with them. I checked out their older headsets in the past. So why not jump in with the newest one to hit the market? Visually, very clean with the metallic-like finish here, although it's primarily plastic. But like I mentioned, it's probably the one that looks most like a gaming headset in terms of design. Regardless, I still think it looks pretty nice. Now one thing I really like with this headset is the minimal approach for buttons. There's only technically one button, which is the power button. Adjusting volume is done nicely with this integrated volume wheel on the side of the right ear cup. If you want to mute your mic, there's no button for that either. You just flip up the microphone past your nose and you're muted. The microphone isn't very flexible, only the rubber piece can be adjusted for the unidirectional mic. In terms of connectivity, inside the box you have a wireless dongle for your PC, your laptop, Mac, or PS4. And once it's plugged in, it'll establish that wireless connection for you. Now in terms of comfort, uh, the ear cups do slightly revolve as you can see. They're not on like a ball head or anything, but it's very similar to that. And they adjust to be pretty wide as you can see to fit a wide variety of heads. Uh, so not the most discreet looking, they're kind of, you know, out there in a sense, but very comfortable, very lightweight, ample padding up top on the headband. Uh, the ear pads themselves are a mix of like a leatherette and kind of like a velvetish material here. So very soft, very comfortable all around. Now sound quality, these are very warm with a surprising sound stage, I'd say. And they also sound decently wide for being closed back. These aren't flat or anything in terms of the sound signature, but with a slight V shape, I'd say. Overall, outstanding in terms of clarity and directional audio for gaming, which is obviously very important. And then the big thing is, there's no distortion or interference with it being wireless. Now out of the three, this is the only one with software. You can go in here and make your own EQs or use presets if you're into that. And also you can make your own kind of precise sound signature. And there's also controls for the microphone, but none of it is needed, none of it is necessary. The sound quality stock out of the box is very, very good. So in the end, a great warm sounding headset with great directional audio. You're gonna have no problems pinpointing enemies, footsteps, explosions in the distance. Very, very good quality sound from Sennheiser here, which you can definitely expect. And with it being wireless, a big concern is gonna be battery life, but there is no concern there. because These are rated up for 100 hours of gameplay. And that's pretty crazy. Um, realistically, you can probably expect between, I'd say, 85 to 90-ish, depending on your use cases, which is still very, very good. With their uh, previous releases, they've been kind of, you know, bumping that up a bit and really working on the wireless connectivity. So, very, very outstanding all across the board here. Next up, we have the Audio-Technica G1WL, and it has that iconic ear cup design with a colored accent ring, very similar to the popular ATH M50X headphones out there. But here we have a different construction for the headband, wireless connectivity, and of course, a microphone, which can actually be detached if you wanna wear these around the house. This is the wired variant. There's also a wired version available as well for cheaper, but connectivity is a breeze. You just plug in the USB dongle into your PC and it automatically pairs within seconds. No fiddling around your drivers or anything. There's no software. It just connects. 
And unlike the Sennheiser headset, this is not compatible wirelessly with a PS4, just Mac and PC. Now the drivers inside here are specially tuned 45 millimeter dynamic drivers that have that signature Audio-Technica flat sound signature, so you can hear things exactly as they were attended to. Making these especially good if you're going to want to listen to music or watch movies with them as well. The ear cups themselves do revolve to lay flat on your desk or around your neck. And the ear pads are this breathable mesh in faux leather material. They're easily swappable and they also come with a replacement pair. In terms of buttons and layout, everything is going to be on the bottom of the left ear cup. It starts with the on off switch, a mic monitor button so you can actually hear yourself through the mic, a very popular feature, micro USB for charging, and the continuous volume wheel which can be pushed in to enable their emulated 7.1 surround sound mode. And then is a mic mute switch. I will say it's probably going to take some time to get familiar with that layout since it's all kind of cluttered down there. So again, for those familiar with Audio-Technica, lots of flexibility here with the ear cups revolving. Um, you get, you know, a slight adjustment here again, just to fit larger heads. And with the metal construction, kind of exposed headband here, um, it does, as you can see, expand pretty, uh, pretty large here. They are very comfortable. Uh, the only real area of concern for me is the slight amount of padding up here, uh, just because I can, I can feel that. So it's not a concerning pressure point, but I could you know tell that the padding there is uh, beaten down on top of my head. I wish it was maybe a bit wider. Um, and also with the exposed metal headband, I don't mind that. I think it looks pretty nice, but I don't like the exposed cables here. Um, visually, doesn't look good, and it definitely could be potentially bad for if one of these get cut, hung up on something, they break, yeah. Sound quality, again, that usual Audio-Technica sound signature, but the bass delivers a surprisingly nice punch. There's not as much detail with the bass, but it does sound better than I thought it would, and there's just a slight roll off in the high end to avoid any harshness. But the clarity all around is great, very detailed and good imaging for gaming. So again, directionally, you're gonna be able to hear where things are coming from. And since they are so, you know, true to life, if you will, with their flat signature, you're hearing games as the audio engineers intended, no over or under compensating. So games that were mixed very well are gonna sound fantastic. Now there is that 7.1 surround sound button, which you can enable. Um, it does mainly kind of boost the mids and the lows, I'd say. Those higher end frequencies in the treble tend to get kind of drowned out a bit since it's emulated. Um, I wouldn't use it personally. And then again, since they're wireless in terms of battery life, I got 14 hours when testing. I don't remember if they said 15 or 16 to expect, but I got 14 on average, which isn't the best. Uh, there's definitely better battery life headsets out there, especially with the Sennheiser at 100. So I would expect to charge these more frequently. Then lastly, the MMX 300 Gen 2 from Bayer Dynamic. And this pair specifically is based off of their familiar DT770 headphones, which are very popular. But with some changes to the visuals, these are tagged as a gaming peripheral. Inside are 45 millimeter dynamic drivers with soft velour pads on the ear cups. And comfort wise, everything here is spot on. The clamping pressure and the balance of the headset just feels great. Now for those of you with an absolute unit for a noggin, these might not be the best for you because they are on the smaller side, I'd say. And this is actually the biggest they go. And that's what I have them on in terms of height. Obviously for you know a wider head, you'll be okay. But uh, yeah, this feels great to me. So not the biggest level of adjustment, uh, but very, very comfortable. And in terms of the visuals, as you can see, it's the most like discreet and uh, form fitting, which I think is very, very comfortable. Uh, fits me just great. And since these are the only wired pair out of the bunch, you don't have to worry about the battery life or anything because it comes with two different cables for you. Now sound quality on these is gonna be, like I said before, on par with the DT770 headphones since they're based off that same driver. And that is a good thing. Also a nice warm sound signature that's gonna deliver a tight hit for the bass. It doesn't get muddy or anything, but it won't punch you in the face either. I do think these have the widest soundstage of the three for being closed back. And again, for gaming, being able to kind of widen your awareness for surroundings is very important. Just like the other two, crystal clear, directional audio is fantastic. Does the fact that it's wired have anything to do with it? Maybe. But there's a reason why the DT770s are so popular and top selling. Since they're based off of that, you can expect the same here. All right, so now we'll head back to the PC and do the sound test for all three. 
First up is the Sennheiser GSP 370. And what I'll do for all three of these mic tests is give you the complete raw unedited audio, just plugged into a laptop, not through any you know audio interface or a mixer, because if you're using this for a gaming headset, odds are it's just you know plugged into a PC or something like that. So this is the uh, conditions we'll be using. I'll go through and do a sound test for all three, and then at the end we will do a kind of like a mashup of all three together. And also at the each of them, uh, after the end of the three, I will do a test of like typing and clicking on a mouse, kind of like simulating gaming and stuff. But I will say, spoiler, out of the three, this one is probably the least favorable. Uh, it just has that traditional lacking microphone sound quality. Um, like that sort of like radio tinny effect that I feel like could definitely be better. Uh, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so now we will do the silence test and then into the typing. Now is the Audio-Technica ATH-G1 wireless. Definitely better, I think, than the Sennheiser mic. Uh, but this still kind of has that nasally wireless microphone sound. So still not blown away by any means, but it does sound better than just your traditional microphone on a gaming headset. Um, I think in one area this could improve on is a little bit more body and bass in the, you know, like the lows and stuff for my voice. Just kind of bring that out. Uh, but again, I think it's, you know, better than the Sennheiser one. Now we will do the silence test. And then lastly is the Bear Dynamic MMX 300 Gen 2. And I think out of the three, this is probably the more balanced and probably full microphone test out of them. Um, it could also be because, you know, out of the three, it's the only wired version as well. So you're getting less interruptions, anything like that with the wireless connectivity. Uh, but I do think out of the three, this is probably the best. Um, now it does, this could just be from my testing, but it does sound like there's some sort of noise gate going on where when there's like, you know, points of silence, you can kind of hear it cut out for a bit to try to eliminate any background noise. Um, it could just be my testing conditions with it plugged into a laptop, but I figured, you know, this is what I'm getting, so report it to you guys as well. And then for the silence test and then the typing and mouse clicking. We're no strangers to love. You know the rules, and so do I. A full commitment's what I'm thinking of. You wouldn't get this from any other guy. I just want to tell you how I'm feeling. Gotta make you understand. Never gonna give you up. Never gonna let you down. Never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna make you cry. Never gonna say goodbye. Never gonna tell a lie and hurt you and hurt you, and hurt you, Rick. So in the end, the point of this video wasn't just to run through three headsets. It was to show you that other than just your traditional gaming headsets out there, there are fantastic other options from audiophile companies who have been spending years and years of development, research, and all this technology put into creating audiophile grade drivers into their headphones but now giving them to a different audience and putting them into their own released uh, headsets out there for gamers. So one to kind of, you know, open your eyes to that. And that does mean you're gonna be spending a bit more than a traditional gaming headset that has RGB lights and, you know, subpar drivers. But again, you're getting them for an overall premium product. So the brand new Sennheiser GSP 370s are $200. The Audio-Technica G1WL R250 and the Bear Dynamic MMX 300 Gen 2 are actually 260 on Amazon. These have been out for over two years. You can get them very, very cheap. I bought these, I believe, for 180 and they were used like new. So again, open your eyes a bit, open your ears to audiophile headsets, audiophile gaming headsets that are not from gaming companies. Figured try something new, you know, open your eyes a bit. 
Hope you guys liked this review and kind of overview. If you did, let me know by giving this video a big thumbs up button to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at randomfrankp. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. I hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.